Hello and welcome to Feria's basic land tutorial. In this video, I will show you how to place land with all the archetypes in the game. There are three different types of land placement you'll be doing when you play your decks, and it's going to be based on your archetype. Rush players are going to want to build land up the center towards their opponent's orb to apply pressure. Mid-range players are going to want to build their lands from the side of their orb up into a double well spot so they can double collect and gain a lot of feria. Control players are going to build from the side of their orbs as well, but they're probably going to stay near their orb and defend against incoming threats and build up the resources they need to find their win condition. So let's take a look at rush land placement first. As a rush player, your goal is to get to your opponent's orb as quickly as possible and then start attacking a well spot. So building your land towards a well, trying to gain control of that well and eventually overwhelming your opponent. Most rush starts are going to start double neutral at the front and then pass the turn. And then it's on your second turn, then you can make a, a decision on what play you want to make. And we're playing Yellow Rush in this example. And June Drake is a fantastic opener for Yellow Rush because it allows us to just build a desert this turn and summon a June Drake. Now, in some cases, you won't have access to June Drake. So you'll be building double neutrals instead than trying to squeeze deserts. Uh, around your opponent's lands. Now, one thing to consider is your opponent will probably not take the center land if they know how to defend against you. So you're gonna wanna build your lands around it just to make sure that you have more aggressive options going in. So we see a wood elemental come down. Luckily for us, we have the choking sand. So this does force us to make another desert by here. Uh, we take the choking sands to remove it and then the dune drake can push some damage now your opponent's going to want to prioritize taking these two land spots here because then it makes the rush player centralized which is not what they want they they want to they want to take uh, at least a well spot or an aggressive land from the center and, and one of the sides so we see grand shaker coming down now to defend but the damage has already been done we take the desert here and then the monk can go in and start applying pressure. And that's basically your role as a rush player. Once you've got these lands set up, you can start playing, um, drawing cards instead of developing land and gain inferior. So that's it. That's the basic rush plan. This is for yellow rush, but green rush and red rush, the other two popular decks play in a very similar fashion. Now you've learned how to attack with rush. Let's learn how to defend against rush. You want to be building lands along the side of your orb and setting up Feria Harvesters. This is really important because the Feria Harvesters are going to collect Feria for you through the early game so you can respond to your opponent with more cards in, into the mid game. And having these Feria Harvesters is super important and that's why we take these well spots as quickly as possible. And your opponent's going to come down the middle, which is absolutely fine. And now we can build a wood elemental here which is a great card for defend against rush because it's a taunt but also develops additional land so next turn already you're gonna have all of these spots taken and these are what i call the priority defense spots get the land next to your wells so your opponent can't have them once you've got these priority well spots you can then start focusing on lands around the well so now we've got this he's going to go into a collection these two spots here are also very good to take because it forces your opponent in a central line of aggression and you can defend from both sides. If you only have access to one of them, I force your opponent to attack where your best creatures are going to be summoned. So in this, in this situation, Wood Elemental is our strongest creature. We'll take the land here. So our opponent will probably defend, uh, develop a land in this spot. And then we already have the Wood Elemental and the Virgin Force to defend against them. And that's pretty much it when defended against Rush. This strategy is very strong. And then eventually you'll build lands up to your opponents once, you're, uh, once they're starved of Feria and develop an aggressive threat. 
So now we're going to learn how to place land at a mid-range deck. Now traditionally, mid-range decks started in the middle and moved across to the Ferio Wells. But as time has gone on, we've come to learn that this isn't a very good strategy against Rush because you don't want to give this land to a Rush player. You want them to force them to make it so it costs them a resource. So ever since then, mid-range players have started building along the side of their wells towards the double collection spot. So yeah, we're going to go from here and then we're going to build up and challenge our opponent. Uh, but our opponent will most likely want to challenge us. He doesn't want to allow us to collect Feria for free. And there we have it. So now we can get the wood elemental down and just push land up into this double collection spot. And this is where most of the combat is going to happen with mid-range decks. Uh, a lot of different archetypes are not going to allow you to do this. Uh, Rush is going to go down the middle, but then you just use the defending against Rush strategy, which I showed you previously. So we have a, a Brute now, and we're going to go into the well. And that is where we're going to defend with the Virgin Force. And that pretty much sums up mid-range land placement. There is a different strategy if you're playing against a slower deck. So if you're playing against another deck that is challenging you, in these well spots you build into the well so you can stop your opponent from double collecting if your creatures get cleared that means you can summon say a virgin force here and then your opponent can't double collect it's going to block him however if you're playing against a slower deck like a control deck you can skip the interior of the wells completely and just move straight up and try and get aggressive land as close to them as possible so you can play more aggressively to punish them as a slower deck a control deck's objective is to build land towards their own wells and collect Feria over the course of the match. They don't play aggressively like aggro decks and they don't build up to one side like the mid-range decks. They stay back, collect Feria from their wells and react to their opponent until they find an opening where they can be aggressive. In this deck specifically, this is a burn deck which is the style of control deck and all this deck wants to do is sit back, deal damage to Lord of Terror and inflict direct damage to your opponent. This is only one style of control and now we'll cover the next style of control decks which are featured in yellow and blue. Yellow control and blue control decks like to start their land in front of their orb and it's all because of this card here, Windstorm Charger and the Gabrian Archon. These cards have charge too and allows them to move around the board very quickly because they can move two spaces at a time and this is really important for their land development because you want your chargers to be able to double collect when they get to this position here and the Gabrian Archons play out exactly the same and these style of control decks want to control the wells, starve their opponent of Feria and then make an aggressive assault to finish them off in one or two turns. You'll generally build your land in what's called the O so you build it up here up here and up here and this allows you to collect Feria very fluidly with these charger cards. That sums up all the basic land placements for the archetypes within the game. Be sure to try out some land placement experiments of your own and see what works best for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and good luck on the battlefield.